Hello, Miami. This is 305 Sports Now, your home podcast and channel for all things Miami sports related. I am Will. And first things foremost, welcome to another episode of Flip Watch. Okay, today uh, in which uh, I pretty much give my perspective on who I think may flip, you know, become a Miami Hurricane who's already committed or verbally committed to another team. Okay, and today... And today, I'm not gonna lie to you, it brings me a little bit of joy. I uh, I'm gonna piss off a few of the uh, a few Gators fans. I mean, a couple weeks ago, I pissed off you know the Buckeye fans when I talked about uh, Jeremiah Smith. And today, I'm going to talk about you know one of the top linebackers in the country, uh, Darius Hitman Hayes, six foot four, 210 pounds, four star linebacker out of Largo, Florida, out of Largo Senior High School. He is the fifth best linebacker in the country, and the eighth best player in the state of florida before you guys start saying oh that's just clickbait he said he was solid you know on uh on uh on twitter and so on and so forth the reason why i have decided to pick this young man is because of this okay yes yes this okay that was a bit of a mistake on the clicker of espn as they said that he's going to flip and become a miami hurricane i don't know who, who messed that up? Because you have to type that into, you know, a clicker. Those who work in the media field, you know, know this. So it, is there something that ESPN knows that we don't know yet as well? And um, and to say the least, he is also visiting uh, when the Canes play Georgia Tech at the Rock Saturday evening. Uh, he's also going to be joined by um, Jeremiah Smith as well, who is also at Nicar, I believe, who's also going to be visiting uh, Miami and watching the Miami Hurricanes play the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Now, let me just go over the stats a little bit about this young man. This man, in 2022, had 121 tackles. 14 of them were tackles for loss. Now, if you look at this kid's huddle, this kid is an absolute animal, right, when it comes to you know the game of football. He is an insane hitter, okay? An insane hitter. He is lowers the shoulder, and he's an immensely nasty, violent tackler with great technique amazing technique right this kid is pretty much polished when it comes to uh the skill of tackling as well great footwork as well lowers his shoulder uses his body lunges into his opponent drops him has um even though he's tall right he's at six foot four he's able to get himself low enough where he's able to bring the guy down but he's taking on a running back as well a nightmare, okay? A nightmare for guys going up against the middle. He's good in coverage as well, okay? So if you're a tight end, you can go up against the middle on a crossing route or a drag, boom, you uh, get ready to get, you know, poked, okay? If you're a tailback, you know, going down the middle, boom, okay? If you're that slot receiver, you're going to get clocked, right? So just to let you know, that's how much of a violent hitter this guy is. Also in coverage, okay? He's not only a guy that you can put in the box and he's able to neutralize the run or neutralize, you know, pretty much a athletic quarterback who could run, He's also a guy that you put in coverage, right? He has a couple of pass breakups. He also has an interception, as you can tell there, from the huddle video as well. Like I said, could play in coverage as well. Could tackle his base, okay? Uh, reminds me a bit of Malik Bryant in that capacity. That he's able to bring guys down in, open, in open space. So swing passes, bubble screens. You know, if he gets his hands on a receiver uh, or running back, they're going down, right? They're going down as well. Could, uh, could also, you know, pursue the passer as well. Uh, could apply pressure. Could sack the quarterback, could be very disruptive in the backfield, both for the running back and the quarterback, i.e. the tackles for loss as well. So he's just basically a very good multi-dimensional linebacker. Some say he's the best linebacker in the country. Seemed very verbally committed to Florida. Um, but why Miami? Okay, why Miami? Well, first things foremost, the Canes are on the rise, right? Miami is a team that seems to be ascending. Miami is a team that has looked good on defense, despite, you know, some hiccups and so on with the passing game. That's also because against AM, that was garbage. Not garbage time, but it was late in the game, you know, against AM. And also, um, didn't have Cam Kitchens in the Temple game. And as I mentioned, you know, with Hoodie Girl, a couple slip ups, you know, in, in a wet field. Uh, so, but the defense is violent, it's aggressive. It's also, um, it's also complicated enough that you also could be an attacking defense, but also make sure your boundaries are covered where you're not exposed, you know, as far as, you know, coverages go. So it's a very good defense. It's a very linebacker friendly defense as it allows the linebackers to come in and attack. Also defensive backs as well. Okay. Uh, allows uh, defensive backs to also get in the blitzing game and also in the pressure game against the quarterbacks as well. So 
What's up with Florida? Well, first things foremost, why would he leave? I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of people who are UF alums that, that I work with, they don't like Billy Napier. Okay, They think Billy Napier is not the right guy for this program. Now, will Florida stick with him You know, for a third or fourth season? We don't know. Okay, they, they Like, for example, Florida State stuck with Mike Novell, where people were calling for Dion to take over. But Billy Napier is someone that I don't think you know a lot of the Florida fan base are sold on him. They've looked horrific on offense. I know he's on the defensive side of the ball, but they've looked horrific on offense. You know, they've uh, they've also, you know, they had a good win against Tennessee, but they got manhandled by Kentucky. You know, as well, they got manhandled by Kentucky. You know, they didn't score much against, you know, Charlotte. You know, Charlotte's, you know, 22-7. It's not, it's not anything. So Florida doesn't, what I'm trying to say is that Florida doesn't look like it's a team that is, uh, on the rise right now okay so it's a team that it seems to have its issues that date way back to dan mullen i thought dan mullen was a pretty good coach not the best recruiter but you know nonetheless it's 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 a school that's got some issues and um and look miami went through it as well so did florida state when miami's been struggling and even last year you know we've had trouble picking up recruits this year you know early under the summer because miami was five and seven and and negative recruiting played a key role and Negative recruiting is now uh, a thing, and they're probably doing the same thing to Florida, as Florida has not looked good at times. You know, three and two of the season, I get it. A good victory against Tennessee, but horrific against Kentucky, horrific against Utah. It was just not 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 his best moments this season. Okay, so um, if I was to predict that what ESPN is talking about is true, listen, the the cornerback over in Colorado seemed very committed. Put out uh, tweets that he was not going anywhere and he ended up in Colorado. And uh, so I'm not sold, you know, that uh, I'm 100% sold on a team. Things happen. Uh, teams uh, adjust. They play better. Uh, defensive corners come in. Schematically speaking, uh, the player may feel that they're better suited for this particular system versus this particular system. So we'll see exactly what happens, okay? If I was to pick right now, I do think uh, Miami has a good chance of flipping this kid. All right, I do think Miami has a good chance of flipping this kid. If he's taking a visit to Miami, you know, in an ACC game, although, you know, you want to take your visits, you still want to see what's out there. And, and I don't blame kids for even taking visits while committed. It helps them out. And also, it's a good way for them to see the country. I do think that this kid is not as locked in as um, he says he is. Just my opinion. All right, just my opinion. And that ESPN clicker doesn't help because it seems a little too coincidental that that happens. And then, and then, uh, He's coming to he's coming to visit uh the Georgia Tech game as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you like what you heard. If you like what you heard, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to 305 Sports Now. All right, let's not forget. I will also be uh in Chalupa and Friends, the halftime show led by Chalupa Batman. I will be participating in that show. And also afterward, right afterward, after the game, the post-game show, I'll be uh along with Ben and Joe from You Heard. All right, I'll be uh as a panelist on their podcast as well. So I'm really busy, all right, this weekend when it comes to Kane stuff, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to your five sports now. Stay safe. God bless you soon. Go Kane's all about the UB Georgia Tech. Bye-bye, guys.